love you so much and thank you all you guys are precious and we love Jesus most of all thank you Father Amen okay. Father listen to our earnest prayers Jesus prayed it years ago Somehow come to know Make us one according to your plan As in heaven it will be And fill us with the truth and righteousness That you desire the world Let your glory and honor fall on your face. Holy Father, rest in this place. Church is sick in need of God alone. People, we must seek His face. And if we'll turn from our unrighteousness, He'll forgive our evil ways. May the eyes. God beyond us here. Lord, revive us by your grace. And Holy Spirit be forever near. Saturate us in this place. Let your glory die. Let the fire 
the glory come down this let the fire fall at the window let the glory come down come down let the fire fall at the window let the glory come down let your Jesus. Amen. Isn't he, a, isn't he a great God? Amen. Church, without the presence of God, there's nothing we can do. 
every single time we got to usher in, and that's why I'm so so impressed with your worship team that usher in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you this morning for the word of God, which is the truth. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus that we can listen to the truth this morning. It will set us free when we get to know the truth. Thank you that the word of God is not a lie, Lord. It'll heal, it'll save, it is the power unto salvation. And thank you that you will let each one, every one of us today get hold of this word. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to please help me to preach with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and not from the flesh. And that the people will listen with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and not from their flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for that. Amen. Okay. How many of you have got computers at your home? Let me just see, just for the interest's sake, put up your hands like this. I suppose none of you ever do a virus check. How many of you do virus checks on your, on your computer? Do you know why you do virus checks on your computer? Because if you don't do that, that thing will get into your computer and it'll eat up your hard drive and you'll lose everything that you have. Am I right? Cost you a lot of money and you'll most probably have to go and either get a new old system and go to Best Buy or wherever to let uh, Jason try and help you with some kind of thing. But you've got to do a virus check. Are, are, are you with me? So you can see if there's something that's approaching your computer and that's going to hurt it. But it take your finger like this. Now, listen, I know you don't have to do it, but listen, I'm from Africa. So we're just doing it a bit different this morning. Take your finger like this. Just put it like this. Put it right there. Come on, just do this. Say, bzzzt. I'm going to do a virus check this morning. <laughs> you see, because this thing inside you is like a computer. And some, now and then you've got to do a little bit of a virus check. And this week, we're going to look at some of these viruses that are attacking the Christians, and we're going to um, <laughs> change it a little bit and, 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 and let the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus Christ and the Word of God come and wash out some of those viruses that are affecting the Christians. And that doesn't mean you're going to go to hell because you've got a virus or you've got something. It's just things that I've, I've been seeing that the Christians are battling with and that I've been battling with in my life, and I know it's like a virus, man this thing gets hold of your mind and your brain, it'll destroy you in the end. And that's why we have a lot of Christians, unfortunately, <clears throat> that are backsliding and are going away from God because they never do a virus check. They never check themselves. The Bible says, judge yourself. Judge yourself. See that you are doing good, okay? Walk in the faith and watch out that, 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 that things don't come against you and you don't even realize it. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Genesis this morning. And I'm going to try and not be too late, just try and lay down a foundation for this week, <clears throat> if it's okay with you. In chapter 3 of Genesis, chapter 3 of Genesis, you're ready. <clears throat> now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, just stop right there. I'm reading from the New King James. If you have another version of the Bible, it'll be the same. We'll get to the same conclusion, all right? So if there's one word or something that's different, just check it on the, on the screen there. The, that, that's the King James. That's okay. Um, it'll be the same in the end. Verse 2. The woman turns around and she says to the devil or the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, which was true. She says, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, oh, come on, man. You must be joking. You will not surely die. You see, now just right there, all the devil did right there was just put one little word in what God had said. God said, you will surely die. He comes and he says, you will not surely die. So he just changes one word in God's word, okay? Eve, unfortunately, takes hold and it's so deceiving, it sounds so good, and it seems so right, 
and he said, then he turns around in verse 5 and he accuses God. He says, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, that's when your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, that's when she took of its fruit and she ate. She also gave to her blonde, stupid husband with her, and he ate. And when I get to heaven one day, that's the first guy I'm going to slap. I'm going to give him a five-fold ministry. <laughs> right here. And say, you, you blonde, you listen to your blonde wife. Come on. How stupid can you go? Look what we went through just because of you. No, I won't do that. I think, Apostle, I'm going to be so glad I'm in heaven. I'm going to say, Adam, Eve, I don't care what you did. woo I'm in heaven. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Oh, we're almost finished. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and that's when they knew that they were naked. Plain English, they realized they'd done wrong. They realized they were in disobedience and they were in sin. So they had done what God had told them not to do. All right? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. You may be seated. What happened here? In plain English, what I've just read to you now, the devil came to Eve and said, hey, come on, what are, what's this thing about you, you, you may eat trees in the garden and you, fruit of the, and the trees of the garden and you may not? And she said, no, listen, God said there's a, we, we can eat of the trees in the garden, uh, but, but uh, the trees in the middle of the garden, there's two trees that we cannot touch because if we touch them and we eat them, then we will surely die. He turns around and says, no, man, no, 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 you will not die. Uh, that, that's, that, that's not right. I'm seeing this... Same thing, the same scenario playing off today. I'm seeing things that God has said in his word that the children of God should not be doing and what they should be doing. And I'm seeing the devil come just as sly as he was then coming right now telling them, oh, <laughs> you serious? I mean, you want to tell me um, that the wages of sin is death? Oh, come on, man. How many people do you know that uh, uh, do adultery, just fall over dead? And how many people do you think that, that, uh, that steal, just die, just fall over dead? Come on, man. That's not true. And how many, I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, but you know, Ananias and Sapphira lied. Well, the devil said, that pr just proves my whole point. In those days, Ananias and Sapphira lied and they just fell over dead. Nowadays, people lie all over the place and they don't fall over dead. I mean, if that was still the case, then I would be the only man standing here today, you know? No, all right, okay. <laughs> And that's a lie. Okay, let's go. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the devil comes and tells the people that what God had told them not to do, even though the wages of sin is death, you won't die. Not realizing that we don't have to physically die, but we can spiritually die if we don't get these things that God said do not do, and we do do in the end because we're listening to the devil and not to God's word. We could spiritually get into trouble, am I right? And sometimes physically also die. Come on, you go sleep around with a woman that's got AIDS and you get AIDS, you can die. You go and steal something from somebody's place and the guy plucks out a 45 and kills you, you can die. All right? Now, you, you keep on smoking and get lung cancer, you can die. So you can physically die of these things. What happened was... When they realized that they had done wrong and that they had sinned, they saw and they realized that sin. Now, the children of God, when you and I do something wrong that God had told us not to do, many times, hopefully, we should be realizing that we have done wrong. Many of the children of God don't even realize that they've done wrong and they just keep on doing it because they think it's right. But there are people that realize that they have done wrong. The problem is we do exactly what Adam and Eve did and we try and cover the sins. We make coverings 
for our sins. Unfortunately, you cannot hide that kind of thing from God. If you have done something wrong, can I take off my jacket? Is it okay? Would you put it there? If, if, if you have done something that God has told you not to do, and I'm talking about the Word of God, guys, the Word of God which tells us what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. Remember what, remember what we're doing this morning. We're going to do, do a little virus check, all right, before we um, get to this week's um, re revival. So, here comes the devil and he tells, no man, you guys can, can, can you, you won't die. And we keep on listening to those words of the, of, the, of the devil. And when we see our nakedness and we see our sin, then we try and cover it up. And we even keep on going. If you go to verse 8 of, of, of that same chapter, and, when you, and, and, and let's just keep on reading with me there. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Listen, you don't hide yourself from the presence of God. You want to be in the presence of God. And these guys try and get out of the presence of God. And unfortunately, I see too many Christians that have made a mistake. Instead of running into the presence of God, they try and hide from the presence of God. And that's when you have Christians. Do you know how most Christians hide from God? They stop coming to church from the presence of God because the presence of God was right in this church. And they don't come to church. They stop reading the Bible. They stop praying. They stop they stop getting involved with their Christian friends and they move away because they want to hide from that what they have done wrong instead of running towards God, confessing, repenting, and getting back and being, being restored. We do exactly what Adam and Eve did. We try and hide the stuff and try and get out thinking God doesn't notice. God knows everything. And if you've done something wrong, come on, man, we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect, yeah? Everybody has sinned and everybody will miss the mark. But you can definitely turn around and say, Lord, man, I just got so angry today that I almost slapped that guy. Lord, and I, I, Lord, I'm sorry, I took a pen from my job, which wasn't my pen, but it was a nice pen and I collect pens. I'll go put it back, Lord. <laughs> okay. You think, you know, I'm, yes, some of you will say, but Brother Hansi, you're really going overboard now. No, no, that's stealing. <laughs> you know, I don't want to steal something from my job that's not mine. I'll ask them, listen, I collect pens. Can I have this pen? And your boss will myself say, yeah, take the old thing. They're going to throw it away in any case. But I'm just take it and then steal it. <laughs> so watch out. Now listen to me. Listen to what happens here. <laughs> They were walking and they were trying to help the, uh, uh, hide themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees. And then God shows up and he asks Adam and Eve three questions, which I want to this morning try and challenge you with these three questions to do a virus check with me. I believe that this is relevant for the church last year, this year, and next year, and as long as we are still on, on earth here. We've got to look at these three questions and apply them to our lives. Because we are in consist consistently making mistakes, missing the mark, and we've got to realize that God is asking these three questions. Verse number nine, here comes the first question. The Lord called to Adam and he said to him, where are you? Question number one. And God is challenging your church this morning. He's asking every single one of you this morning the same question. Where are you? Well, I'm in church, Brother Hansi. I know, and God knows that. Do you think God did not know where Adam and Eve was? He knew exactly where they were hiding, what they were doing. But God wanted them to tell him where they were. Because he wanted them to realize what state they were in. Where, how they had moved away from God and they, how they were trying to get out of the presence of God and hide from God. This morning God's asking every single one of you, including me right here in front, where are you in your spiritual life with God? Because only you and I can answer that question to ourselves. I cannot talk 
or answer for you or for my wife or for my daughter or for anybody of you. Every single one of you, you can only answer that question to God alone, you. Where are you in your spiritual life? Let me, let me explain it to you this way. I like doing this. I, I, I'm always practical. There's God and there's rock bottom. There's 0% and there's 100%. Where are you in your spiritual life with God? Yeah, but, 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 but Brother Hansi, I'm born again. I know you're born again. But do you know that you can be born again and have a zero relationship with God? Yep. A man and a woman got into a sexual relationship and um, a baby was born. And the man wanted nothing to do with a woman or with a baby. And he left. The woman raised the kid, the young girl, from a baby. Never saw her father, never heard from him. And when she was 21 years old, she wanted to find out who her father was. And she found out who her father was. And she, uh, her father agreed to meet her at the airport. And when the two met each other, they hugged each other and they cried. Because for the first time in her 21 years, she saw her dad, and her dad saw her for the first time. Is he her father? Is he her father? Her biological father? Yeah. He was the father and the woman, and they had a baby. He is, he is her biological father. Do they have a relationship? Nope. You see, so you can have, you can, God can be your father, but you can still have no relationship with him. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah? You can, God, you, you, you can be born again and be a child of God. That child was that, uh, uh, that father had a child and that child had a father, but they had no relationship. So I'm asking you this morning, and God's asking you, where is your relationship? Is it rock bottom, or is it right up there, or is it somewhere in the middle? I don't know about you, but I want my relationship right up there with God so that I can be so close to being Christ-like that people, wherever I go, will look at me and say, man, there's something about you that's different. Come on, church. I'm... Um, I'm challenging you, you this morning. You have to and just put that little button in there and press that uh, antivirus spyware thing in, in you and start asking yourself, is there something that is blocking my relationship with God? Although I'm a child of God, I have no relationship with God. Yeah, but Brother Hansi, I think I have. Okay, let me ask you this. What God is asking, where are you? He's asking this. Where is your praise and worship? relationship with God. Do you come to church on Sunday mornings and you just stand here? Yeah, well, I don't know those songs. Why should I have to sing, uh, open the eyes? And uh, I, I don't know that song. You see, it doesn't matter what you know and what you don't know. That's why they put the words on there so you could learn the song. And you have a praise and worship team that you don't come and worship the praise and worship team. You come and worship God. You see, and some people, they are born again, but they have a 0% praise and worship relationship with God. They never praise God. They never worship God. And some of you think when uh, uh, all these girls up here and, and Jason and Ms. Joan, when they close their eyes, you think, oh, they are so holy. No, they're not holy. They just don't want to see some of you worship. I've been there. Did you sing up there? You had the same clothes on this that most of them have. <laughs> Am I right? Sometimes you guys think, gee, God, are we singing the right songs? I mean, I don't know who else was on top there. Sometimes you guys think, and you guys down there think, oh, no, man. And, and when they just begun, they start looking at your watch. You see, Come on, guys, let's lift our praise and worship. Can you imagine if this church just starts saying, man, I'm going to get my praise and worship up there with God. So when people see me, they say, whoa, look at this praiser. Look at this worshiper. Whoa, man, this is going to be good. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what God wants. Thank you. Who else was singing? 
I just want to touch your hand because I feel sorry for some of you. <laughs> because I do it up here. I know that's how some. Hey, where's your faith life? Where's your faith life? Are you trusting God or are you walking by fear? Who is my brother that preached on fear this morning? Gary, huh? Where, 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 where's Brother Gary? Did you? Yep. Are, are you walking by faith or are you walking by what he preached this morning? Fear. How's your faith like? How's your relation? Are you, are you walking by faith and not by sight? How's your obedient life? Are you doing what God's telling you to do? Or are you rock bottom? I don't care what God says. I'm doing it my way. How's your tithe paying? But look at me. Are you tithe paying? Do you pay tithes when you feel like it? Or do you don't pay tithes? Well, I don't pay tithes because I don't know what pastor does with my tithe money. I'm looking at that old stupid Ford of his. He wants to buy a new Chevrolet in any case. I'm not going to give him my tithe money so he can buy a Chevrolet. We actually had a, a, a pastor and his wife. Uh, I went up in north and she was a hairdresser. And she was making her own money, but pastor was getting a salary. Uh, so she was always nicely dressed because she was a hairdresser. Do you believe that there was actually one thorn in the flesh lady that would come up every Sunday? Hi, pastor. Oh, hmm. You've got another new dress. I don't hope you're using our tithe money. <laughs> now, listen to this. It's serious stuff. That pastor's wife looked at that woman and said, listen, I'm a hairdresser. I work for my own money. I don't take your tithe money. Next Sunday, you sure you're not using our tithe money? I mean, now you've got a new necklace. She almost made that pastor's wife backslide. For three years, she tormented her until she one day told her husband, one more Sunday and I'm out of there. That pastor got up. And he took hold of that lady in front of that whole church. And he said, you never do that again. There's the door if you want to do that. And that stopped, thank heavens. But, you understand? but people have that attitude. Come on, where, where, where is your relationship with God? How's your praise and worship? How's your faith? How's your obedience stuff? How's your tithe pain? How's your witnessing life? Oh, I have a, God's my father. I have a relationship with God, but you never witness. You never testify. You never tell people about your church and how great your pastor preaches and how good your praise and worship team is. Oh, we're just rock, but it's all just about me, all about me. Come on, guys. If we say that we have uh, a, a, a relationship, with, where's your love life? Where's your love life? Are you loving each other? Or are you just saying you love each other? Come on, we're doing a, a, a virus check this morning. You've got to figure this out. And if you figure out that, hey, man, I, I'm supposed to, but Hansi, will I go to hell if I, do, if I don't do it? No, most probably not. I cannot say that. But I'm just telling you, you have no relationship with God. I'm afraid of those words, I never knew you. Because that basically means you never had a relationship with me. I'm, 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 I'm worried about that. Yeah, but I prophesied in your name. I, I healed people in your name and the stuff. And when I read that scripture, I thought, man, that's me. I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus. I'm healing people in the name of Jesus. And Jesus tells people like that, I never knew you. Depart from me. Because they just had show, but they never had no relationship. I don't know about you, but I want my relationship right up there with God. I want to be Christ-like. I want to get out all the trash in in. in in my life. How's your word reading? Come on. You say you've got a relationship with God, but, you, but, you're not, but you're never in the word. You never read the word. Do you know? I think I'm going to say it again. Some people, uh, their cell phones are more important than their Bibles. Amen. Because they'll stop here at a, at a quarter to 11, uh, 10.45, and say to their wives, Oh, I forgot my cell phone. You guys go into church and they'll drive back home 15 minutes and come back just to go get their cell phone. And next Sunday when they stop here at 10.45, oh, I forgot my Bible. No, it's okay. Because they put it on there. Yeah, but Brother Hunsey, I've got to go and get my, my, uh, my cell phone. I mean, people will text me and they might leave me messages. Do you know that God was texting long before the texting ever existed? <laughs> Have you read all these text messages? Huh? I've got a whole iPad, iPod, what do you call that new stuff? 
Look how thick my iPad is. I've got text messages from God to Hunsi. Pay your tithes. Walk by faith. Love your neighbor. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. No weapon formed against you, Hunsi, shall ever prosper. Mm, greater as uh, Hunsi, I'm inside of you. I'm greater than he that's in the world. You see, I've got, I've got so many text messages I haven't even written. <laughs> I cannot get to them. Where, is you, where are you? Only you can answer that question. Now listen to me. Depending on where your relationship is or depending on where you are in your relationship with God, that's going to determine the next question that God asks, answers. Well, let me put it, depending on where you are in your spiritual life will determine, number two, who you're going to listen to. Are you with me? Depending on where you are in your spiritual life, that's going to determine who you're going to listen to. Here comes the second question. So he said, where are you? In verse 10, so Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. You see, guys, listen to me. I don't know what Brother Gary preached this morning, but fear always comes from the devil. When the sin is there and you can see, you always get afraid. But listen, that's where we cancel fear, where we say, I have a loving and a forgiving God. I made a mistake. I don't have to live by fear. God will forgive and set me free if I repent and confess. So that's, how, that's where my faith is, in God's forgiveness and in his love. Amen? He said, I was naked and I hid myself. Second question, and God said, who told you that you were naked? Basic English, uh, plain South African English. Who spoke to you? Who were you listening to? Who told you that what you did was right or wrong? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? So God asked him. Have you basically gone against and been disobedient? And what God is basically asking is, where is your relationship with me? You know where it is. I want you to tell me, God says. And secondly, and, and when you tell God where you are, God can say, okay, who you been listening to? Who told you that faith doesn't work? Who told you that paying tithe doesn't work? Because you've been paying tithes for six months now, and, and you're still not a millionaire. Well, where did you read that? Well, the Bible says God will open up the windows of heaven. Yeah, but you know, sometimes when God does that immediately, when you pay tithes, you'll be out of here, and you'll never pay tithes again because you got all that money. God will test you sometimes to see if you are out there, and you are out there to pay your tithes so that he can look after you and bless you. And over above your tithes, you're still going to give your offerings as well. So God's testing us as well. And God can make you a millionaire. I don't believe God will make every Christian a millionaire. I've told you this in, your, in, your, in the service before because if God makes all of us millionaires, we'll be gone to Hawaii. We'll be hooping with the girls. <laughs> we'll never see half of us. And when you're a millionaire, you've got to give $100,000 tithes. You know how difficult that is to give. Some of us battle to give $100 a month. What about $100,000? You'll buy three Chevrolet trucks and give me one for free. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Who told you that love doesn't work? Yeah, but the church has hurt me so much and the church has done. Doesn't matter what that has. Love covers a multitude of sin. You see, now God's asking you, who told you that the sin that you were doing is okay? Who told you that, that what I told you not to do is okay? Who told you that living together as a, a boyfriend and a girlfriend is okay? Yeah, well, uh, everybody's doing it. And, 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 and I've got to test drive my girlfriend to see if she's okay. I had a, boy, a guy one day told me, I've got to test drive this girlfriend. Man, I felt really like slapping. I said, she's not a car. She's a, she's a woman. You don't test drive a woman. I told that woman, I called her one side. I said, hey, baby, I know you love this guy, but if I'm you, I'm out there, baby. This guy's just after your body. He's just after sex. Get out there. He's going to misuse you. And if you good, do get pregnant all the day when you say no, he's going to leave you for another girl. 
And they were two born-again Christians. That's what I don't understand. You see, where's your relationship? If you know where you are, that's going to depend who you're listening to. Now listen to me. If your relationship is rock bottom with God, who do you think you're going to listen to? God? No, people that are rock bottom with where they are in their relationship are not praying, they're not fasting, they don't live by faith, they don't read their word, and they don't hear God, they're in disobedience. So whose voice are they listening to? To the dead. To the serpent's voice. They're hearing the devil say, it's okay what you do. Don't worry. I mean, everybody's living together. Nobody's paying tithes. Everybody lies. People cuss. People drink. People do adultery. It's okay. Nothing's happening to them. You can do it as well because your relationship is rock bottom. But let me tell you, when you're right up there with God and you've got a good relationship, when the devil tells you that you shouldn't pay tithes, you say, shut your face, devil. I know what that word says. I'm in the word all the time. I'm a word reader. I'm a prayer. I walk by faith. Then you will hear God's word. Are you with me? Now, some of you say, well, I don't understand why I'm battling with this. Maybe because your relationship is not there with God. And the only reason you can get your relationship right up there with God is by getting into the word, by living by faith, by praying, by fasting, by coming to church and getting closer to God, communicating with God. And that's when you'll hear God's voice and not the devil's voice. Because the devil's voice is the okay voice, and God's voice is the good news of Jesus Christ. That it doesn't matter if you've committed murder or uh, uh, adultery or um, uh, abortion, the blood of Jesus can wash you clean. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the word that you will hear, and you will hear that small little voice in Isaiah 30, verse 21, saying, this is the way, walk in it. And no, don't look at that woman. No, don't take that pen. No, you must pay your tithe. You will hear that voice, okay? Because, you are, because your relationship is up there and not rock bottom. So what am I saying? Where are you? Depending on where you are, will determine who you're going to listen to. And that's why we have Christians that are born again that are listening to the lies of the devil. Because their relationship is rock bottom with God. And they're born again. They come to church. They love Jesus. But their relationship is not good with God. Come on. Are you, are you testing yourself? Listen, when I worked out this sermon, I made a few right marks, but there were a few wrong marks that I had to make personally. And I had to fix this in my life. I ought to get some of my, I mean, I, I know I've got a good relationship with God, but there were some things that was rock bottom in my life, Jason, that I was not doing. Thank heavens for God is a God of second chances, and God is a God that says, you make right, I'll fix you up quickly, man. That's the God that we have. Okay, praise God for that. Now, listen to me. Depending on where you are in your relationship with God will determine who you listen to, the person that told you, who told God tells you how good love is, how good faith is. You are blessed. You are righteous. The devil tells you you are bad. Love doesn't work. Financing, financially, you've got to be poor. And it's not God's will to heal you. You've got to be sick. Oh, come on, please. I've heard that so many times. I'm, I, I want to throw up if I hear that again. God wants to heal me. He wants to heal me. He wants to heal me. The Word tells me that. And I don't want to go against anything, but God is a healer. He does not make people sick. All right? So the bad news and, and the good news. Deep, deep. Let, me, let, me, let me just get up here and get, just cool down because I get, sometimes I get so... <laughs> Depending on who you are listening to, that's going to determine your actions. So here comes the third question. <laughs> Don't get upset with me, okay? Let's go back to verse 11. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, Adam said, the, the woman you gave me, she gave me of the tree. And I, I listen to me, look at me quickly, guys. Depending on where your relationship is will determine who you listen to. Determine on who you listen to will determine your actions. Many times when we are doing wrong, we are in sin. It's because we've listened to the devil. 
And he cannot make you sin just for the interest sake. A devil cannot wake up, uh, walk up to you and say, listen, you are going to get drunk right now. I have so many people saying, oh, but uh, man, why did you get drunk? Well, the devil told me to get drunk. Well, why did you go to the party and, and use marijuana? Well, my friends made me do it. Have you heard that before? Listen, are we a bunch of spineless Christians with no backbone? That anybody can walk up to you and tell you, you got to get drunk. you got to use drugs. you got to sleep with that woman. I think I've got the opportunity to make a choice. No. Yes. I make the choice, yes or no. It's, they put the thoughts. The devil never made Eve eat that tr apple. He suggested to her that she can eat it and because God doesn't want them to eat it. But he told her, man, you know, actually, you won't die. He never even told her, go and read it properly. He never said, eat the apple. Never came out of his mouth. He just said, you won't die. And she made the choice. So you and I, what we make do wrong with our relationship is not, not, it's not the devil. Our actions is not what the devil tells us to do. It's the suggestions in our mind that influence that it has. Then we decide and we do what because our relationship is not good with God. We listen to the devil and now our actions come out. And we, then we start accusing other people. It's their fault. Other people made it. The woman you gave me made me do it. And then the woman turns around and says, no, it's the devil that made me do that. No, it's you. It's you and I. Don't get up, up, upset with me. So the first question, a third question, verse 13. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? That's when she said, the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord said to the serpent, and he said to him, you are cursed. All right, and God tells the serpent, the devil, that he is cursed. So listen to me, the third question is, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? What are your actions? First one is, where are you? Second one is, who told you? Who you've been listening to? Third question is, what are you doing? What have you done? You see, this is the actions. Determining on where you are in your relationship with God, depending, will determine who you listen to. Depending on who you listen to, will determine your actions. Now you have godly men and women, godly Christians that have no relationship with God or a weak relationship with God. They listen to the devil's lies and not God's truth. And now their actions, pastor, are unrighteous, unholy, ungodly actions. Now you have Christians that are born again that are go out and get drunk. And they'll go out and sleep with a, with a woman and do adultery. They'll go and steal stuff. They won't pay their tithes. They won't love each other. They'll hate each other because it's my right. Do you know what they did to me? You understand? And their actions show who they are listening to. And because they've listened to that, makes it very clear that it shows you where their relationship is with God. Man, I got a good guy behind there, that board there. I didn't even give you a note, and you got it already picked up there. Where are you? Who told you? What are you doing? And God's challenging you this morning. What are you doing as a Christian? How's your actions? What about having a good relationship with God, hearing God when he speaks, so that when your actions come out, they are righteous, godly, holy, virtuous actions, so that people can say, man, you are different. What are you talking about, Hansi? Um, actions like when people uh, uh, drink or when they cuss, you turn around and walk out. When they watch a movie and the name Jesus or God comes out there as a cuss word, I get up and I walk out. Jeanette um, was a school teacher. Me and Jeanette, we were both school teachers many years ago. And um, she, they had so much respect for her in that, in, in, in that school that when they were sitting in a, 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 in a break and the kids were playing outside and um, they were in the staff room and they would be drinking coffee, it came down to this point. If they wanted to tell a dirty joke, they would say, Jeanette, would you please leave? We want to tell a dirty joke. Because if they did tell a dirty joke, Jeanette would stand up and say, sis on you. And you guys go to church. And they all went to church. 
and she just get up and walk out. They had started getting respect for her. I think I told you this before as an example. We were in a, in a, in a, in a restaurant, but I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna say it again. This is your action. What's your action? How is your action? When, when, when people start gossiping and criticizing, do you just jump in and say, oh, you think that's good? Let me tell you something. No. What's your action when people tell dirty jokes? Would you stay there and listen and just go right on there? What are your actions? Do you, will you sleep with a woman when she comes by with a mini dress walking past you? Or do you look and say, mm -mm, she might be good looking, but she's not my problem. It's another man's problem. I'm going to go to mama. I'm going to be like Joseph, run away. She can tear off my coat, but I'm going to run, baby. Mm -hmm. Watch your actions. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying here, guys? Because if you don't do these, these things before you know where you are, you will end up in trouble. Now, depending on what you are, what your actions are, let me just go back and see if, if, if I've missed something. It'll, it'll, <clears throat> what are you doing? What, hey, who have you, you been listening to, first of all? Now, depending on... Uh, He's basically saying, why are you going against God? Why have you listened to the lies of the devil and now doing opposite what God has told you to do? Why are you sinning and doing the devil's will instead of what God said? Why are your deeds unholy? As a Christian, you don't need to be doing adultery, fornication, murdering, thefting, gossiping, criticize. You don't need to do that. But what if I make a mistake? Then you repent and you confess. And you ask God to forgive you. And you don't run away because you do that stuff. But if you realize where you are, and you realize that where you are will determine on who you're listening to, and that'll depend or determine what your actions are, you better get right up there, you and I, so that we can hear God. And when we do actions, 99% will be godly actions. And the other that we miss, we can repent and confess of. Can you imagine a church having this attitude? Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. Now, depending on what you do and how you live, I've got one more question. It's going to determine. Now, all right, hang on a moment. Let me just say this. Some of you are saying, but Brother Hansi, you're now talking about actions. You're talking about works. Um, I've got 10 minutes and I've got to be finished. Um, are we... Is, 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 um, you, you want to speak talking good works is salvation. No, I'm not saying that your good works will bring you salvation. You don't get saved because of good works. You get saved to do good works. Can I repeat that? You don't get saved because of your good works and righteous works. You get saved to do good works. When I was in the world, I would sleep around and drink and drug, and my actions showed that I didn't love God. I was an unrighteous, unholy, ungodly man. But now that I'm born again, now my works show that I am righteous. I am holy. The things that I now do are not the things that I did when I was in the world. So my, what? Those works definitely did not save me. I got saved by confessing and repenting my, of my sins and confessing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and believing in my heart. That's how I got saved. But now my works show that I am saved. Now let me just end off this, depending on what you're doing, will determine who you serve. Now, don't shoot me down, okay? Because a lot of you will now say, hey, listen, I'm a child of God. I serve God. Let me read you something. I want you to go there quickly. Go to the book of John, chapter 8, and then we're going to end off. John, chapter 8. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Hansi only comes here. Once a year. So just stick another 10 minutes, okay? I know I preach a bit longer than pastor, but he could stop and carry on next Sunday. I cannot do that, okay? Read with me from verse 31 of John chapter 8. I want you to go up there and put on there. And let's go through it. We're going to read right up until verse 45. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, you can look at on top there. How many of you believe in Jesus? 
So the same thing, okay? Jesus was talking to the Jews who believed in him. These are people that believed in Jesus. He said, if you abide in my word, if you stay in my word, in other words, if your relationship with me is good and word-wise, you are my disciples indeed, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, that's the word of God, and the truth shall make you free. That's a good scripture, verse 33. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say that we were made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Okay? That means people that do sin on purpose. A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Man, that's a good scripture. Woo, thank you, Lord. Now, he's talking to people that believe in him, okay? Then he says, I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me. I thought these people believed in Jesus. He says, now you seek to come because my word has no place in you. Just keep that there. You see, there are Christians in church that are born again, that believe in Jesus, but God's word has no place in them. Because if it has place in the Christians, why are the Christians not doing what that word is saying? Why are we still battling that we only have eight, 18% of the world paying tithes. The word has no place in the Christians. If you and I cannot even pay tithes, how are we going to stick to all the other things that God tells us to do? If we cannot even, if we cannot even love each other unconditionally, my brother, it doesn't matter what you say to me. It doesn't matter if you don't like me. I still love you. Yeah, well, you're a short, little skinny South African. I don't care how you, what you say about me. I still love you because love covers a multitude of sins. You understand what I'm saying? That's how we should be living. But, the, but, but because the word has no place in us, now I hate you, boy. Now, now, now I call you names. Who do you think you are? Are you becoming gray? And I'm not gray yet. So you're an old man. Or whatever you want to say, you know, and you start tearing each other apart. Keep on going. In verse 38. I speak what I've seen with my father, and you do what you've seen with your father. So he's the, 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 now all of a sudden Jesus is saying, there's another father. You believe in me, but you're doing what the other father's saying. Verse 39. Keep on going. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth for which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, hey, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. So these people believe in Jesus and they're saying our father is God. Look what Jesus said to them. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God, nor have I come on myself. Just keep that one there. But he sent me. You see, the same with us. If we say God is our Father, we should be loving Jesus. Yeah, but I love Jesus. Do we? If we love Jesus, why aren't we doing what he said we should be doing? If you and I claim that we love Jesus, then, man, I'll do anything he tells me because I love him. I love my wife. I remember before I got married, I was a guy who was living by myself. When, if you walked into my apartment, you would see underclothes, socks, shirts, pants, trousers all over the place. You would walk like this. <laughs> then after I got married, mama said, eh, eh, papa, no more. There is the waist, the, what do you call it? The basket, the clothes basket, the dirty clothes must go in there. I said, come on, man, and you know. She said, not, not in my house. You love me, you do what I tell you to do. <laughs> so I picked up all the clothes, and now it goes into the waste basket. Why? Because I love my wife. There's things that she did that I don't like that I told her. If we love each other, we'll start doing what we want to do. You, if you love Jesus, he says, you'll do, you, you will love me. You'll do what I told you. Keep on going. Verse 43. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. And you know that. <clears throat> I sometimes preach it. When I preach a bit hard, and when pastor preaches a bit hard, and some of us out there, we think, oh, how did he know that that was me? No, we didn't know it was you. The Holy Spirit just knows it's you, and you're feeling con 
convicted, then you'll have people that get up and walk out because they're not able to listen to the word of God. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm being straightforward. I've been here two, two three years now already. Okay? I, you guys should know I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to lift you up and say, let's get our relationship with God where it should be. Man, so we could, man, you know, there's a different spirit in your, in your church. Different spirit in, 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 in your church from last year. It's like, phew, like it, it's like blooming up, okay? So come on, let's just, let's just get that relationship up there and you'll see pow, fire burn out and the wind of the Holy Spirit blow. Then he says to them, you are, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. Hans, are you telling me our, our father is a devil? No, I'm not saying that. Listen to what he said. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. You see, when we listen to the devil, we listen to his lies. This, guys, who who are you serving? Are you serving the devil or God? But I'm not serving the devil. I'm, I'm serving God. Listen to me very carefully. What does a server do? A server is somebody that walks up to you and asks you, you what you want. Am I right? If we go and eat out just now, the server will ask us, what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? What do you want to drink? And we will tell that person, and they got to do what we tell them. Am I right? Because they are serving me. Even if she hears my accent, they turn around and say, hey, there's a guy with a funny accent. And he's ordered the most worst dish on the menu. I don't care what she thinks. That's what I ordered. She is the server. She's going to do what I tell her. Am I right? If you and I, are, our actions are ungodly or unrighteous or not right, guess who we're serving? If the devil, if, if you are doing adultery, you are not listening to God's word. You're listening to the devil's word. That what the devil told you to do, you will be doing. Then you're serving him. Yeah, but I'm born again. I know you're born again, but you will still serve that father if you do what he tells you to do. You see, this is the sad part. I don't want to be a born again child of God and serve the devil indirectly by doing everything he tells me, but I love Jesus and I'm, and I'm a child of God, but what God tells me to do, I cut off and I listened to the devil's lies. That's what Eve did. She, God was her father, but she was doing what the devil said, and she ate of the, of, the, of the tree. And that's why, because of our relationship, that's not right. That'll de de determine who we listen to, de determine, depending on who you're listening to. If you listen to the devil, then your actions will be ungodly, and you'll be serving him. I don't want to be a devil server. I want to be a God server. Say that with me. I don't want to be a devil server. I want to be a God server. Say, so I will get my relationship right with God. Say, so I will listen to the truth of God, not the lie of the devil. So my actions will be holy, righteous, godly. I won't do what the devil says. I will serve God, not the devil. Help me, Holy Spirit. Give him a clap. Thank you, Jesus. Let me, let me give you one last scripture and then we can come. Um, um, go to Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Let me put it up there. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Just to top it off. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. I don't hope that I've hurt people this morning. That was not my intention. My intention is to help you. Look at this. There are people that profess to know God. Read that with me. There are people that profess to know God. They say it, but in works they deny Him. Come, babies. How? By being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. I don't know about you, but I want people to look at me. Has people ever told you that you're different, that you're doing things different? Boy, you've got to be happy then. But then you know that somewhere what you're doing or what you're saying is different than, than, than them. That's when you know, ah, I'm on the right track. Amen? Nobody angry with me? Come and stand with me this morning. Everybody put your hands up like us. Father, I bless you this morning. Thank you for these precious people, for the church. Thank you that we've just laid down a, 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 a basis. And we are thanking you this morning, God, that you will help us, everyone in this church, this week, so we can get our relationship right up there with God, that we'll start listening to, the, to, to, to God and our actions will start becoming more righteous, more holy. 
And I thank you for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Listen to me, guys. I know some of you are thinking, but come on, Hansi, I mean, you, you're talking so bad. Just play stuff. Let me, let me give you an example. Just, just stand like it. I went to Walmart. I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. I went to Walmart. I was going to buy CDs to make the copies of the sermons for you guys. Um, I was a bit late. So I'm walking to, and there's, I don't know about you, but I hate the long lines where, 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 where people are standing. And there's one cashier that is nobody. And the old, and a black lady, old black lady with a full cart of groceries is walking like us. And there's the cashier. And I'm coming from here. Now, I'm in a hurry. I'm checking. Nobody there. I, I'm full. It's full. It's full. And I see this one. lady's empty. And I see this old lady going in there. And I thought, oh, no, God. No, please. If she gets in there, then I'm going to stand for an hour. And I hear this voice saying, well, just bump in in front of her. And I said, yeah, but what if she said, hey? I said, oh, sorry, ma'am. I didn't see you. Guess what I do? I should run in front of her. Oh, sorry, ma'am, I didn't see you. I got to preach a revival that night, Pastor. The Holy Spirit says, well done. You are so anointed. And tonight, everybody's going to be healed and set free. And I knew, oh, man. I turned around and said, ma'am, I'm sorry. I saw you. I pushed in in front of you. Please come. You know what the old lady tells me? It's okay, young man. I wasn't going to pay any case. I was just going to push my car chair. I'm waiting for my friend. I thought, gee, oh man. Did the devil get me? But you know what I do? Immediately I repent. Immediately I confess. God, please forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and I'm forgiven. Are, are you with me? So the Holy Spirit says, is that that? I said, yeah, I did what I had to do. He said, you're missing an opportunity. I look at the old lady. I said, ma'am, are you okay? She says, no, I'm very sick. I thought, oh, baby, right there in Walmart. You know how I pray. I don't just say, oh, Lord. I say, listen, and come loose in Jesus' name. So I look at this lady. I say, ma'am, you sick? Come out of her, you infirmary spirit. Go, I lose you. And the people in Walmart walk in. I don't care what they thought. I don't care what they said. I said, devil, now I'm going to whip you double. Because you, you caught me with a sly trick. Everybody can make them. For that second, my relationship was just right there. I did the wrong thing. My actions were ungodly. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Perfect. That night we had a great service. Is there anybody here this morning? Everybody close your eyes. Come, pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I repent. I confess of all my sins. Thank you, Lord that I'm restoring my relationship with you. So thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ dying on the cross for all my sins, all my sicknesses. So I give you my heart afresh anew. Come into my life, Jesus. A new relationship, a fresh relationship. I love you, Lord. You are my God, my Savior, my healer, my deliverer. Say, you are my God. Say, I am your child and I will love you. Thank you, Lord, that I could fix up my relationship with you in Jesus. For the people on the, on the internet that are listening, would you agree with me? Lord, thank you that you will do the same what you've done in this church. For the people that listened on the internet, we thank you that there's anybody on the internet right now that they can just put their hands towards the internet, towards that screen. Lord God, you heal in whatever way you want to heal. There are people out there that might have cancer, growths, tumors, viruses, infections, diabetes, lung problems, heart problems, brain problems, fear, worry, stress, anxiety, agoraphobias, whatever phobia there is in Jesus, liver problems, gallbladder problems, pancreas problems, kidney, Lord, back problems, headaches, in Jesus' name, we curse all those infirmities as a church 
we agree for the healing power of the Holy Ghost to heal those people and we thank you for the healing Lord we praise you that you are a healer in the name of Jesus Christ Amen come on church give God clap